Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, just like yesterday, we are seeing storms fire up across the state. Some of these could cause more high water issues. Meteorologist Evan Hatter has the latest on the flood threat on this severe weather alert day. Evan? Well, Steve, we just got our second flash flood warning of the day. It was just issued uh, for portions of the area. The first one a little bit earlier on this afternoon for Wise County. You see the flood watch in effect for everybody through tonight. That was extended from 8 o'clock through midnight tonight in some areas, perhaps even longer. Everybody's under the level two slight risk for excessive rainfall as we head through the nighttime hours tonight. There's a view from our high knob camera at UVA wise, one of the areas under a flash flood warning or perhaps just north of that polygon where we've got heavy rain in place. I-75 at Mount Vernon as well. There you see the first flash flood warning in effect for parts of Wise County in the city of Norton through 445 this afternoon. They're not dealing with a ton of heavy rain, but still some big time showers there. Our latest flood warning, we'll get to that in just a second. Heavy rain right now in the portions of Leslie County, moving into northern Perry County, moving out now of Breathitt County into Knott County and McGoffin County. And this area is giving me a little bit of concern as we have that area of rain horizontal from Menifee County through Morgan into Elliott and now Lawrence County where we knew, do now have that latest flash flood warning. I'll highlight it for you on the screen. This runs until 7 o'clock. An inch and a half to two inches of rain have already moved through the area and even more is possible. That's for southern parts of Lawrence County. Does not include Louisa. But we also have to watch more rain moving up from the south. So we're not done until this frontal boundary finally moves out of the area and that won't be until later on tonight. So keep that WYMT weather app handy. We've got plenty of flooding potential as we head through tonight. I've got the latest on when we finally look dry out coming up in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Today marks 13 days since people in eastern Kentucky woke up to devastation caused by historic flash flooding. But recovery and relief efforts continue. 38 Kentuckians have been lost to the floods. That number now includes the Knott County athlete that died after getting sick while helping clean up. Two women are still missing in Breathitt County. Nearly 200 people remain in emergency shelters. 315 people who lost their homes are being housed at state parks. The state also has 77 travel trailers in the region. 6,600 water connections are still out. Five wastewater systems are still out of operation. Power outages, a bit of good news, now down to 333. And most of those outages are in Clay County, but the emergency management director there says they are making progress. He says they are in much better shape than he thought they would be two weeks ago. WYMT's Phil Pendleton shows us the work there. We are here in the Bullskin community. This is near Oneida where most of the devastation took place. Here, 10 homes ruled inhabitable by the emergency management director and between 50 and 60 destroyed. From homes washed away to those that water filled up four to five feet high, the cleanup and recovery requires a lot of work. Everything must come out of these homes contaminated by the muddy water. A lot of the work is being done by volunteers from faith-based and healthcare organizations to those who just traveled here to do work. Homes were devastated, uh, communities destroyed, lives lost. Uh, but two weeks later, and, and honestly, it, if you would have said, David, how long is it going to take you to get back to this point? I would have said six to, six to eight weeks. And this is sadly a community that lost several of its residents. An 81-year-old woman, a 76-year-old man killed when the emergency management director says that the floodwaters, the massive force of that, simply caused them to be swept out of their homes. In Clay County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. The emergency management director says 95% of their homes have been cleaned out since the flooding happened. Today, Governor Andy Bashir was back in Letcher County and spent some time in the Neon community. The governor spoke with WYMT's Olivia Calfee while he was in Neon today, and he shared that unfortunately, the death count has now officially increased to 38. Sadly, our, our, our death count went up. Uh, officially, we're now confirming 38 because we lost a young man uh, in the cleanup. We've already reached out and we'll be helping his family with funeral expenses and we grieve with him and each one of the 38 individuals that are lost. 
We'll hear more from Governor Bashir and his time in Neon coming up tonight at 6. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell continued his tour across eastern Kentucky. Yesterday, he made stops in Floyd, Letcher, Knott, and Pike counties. WYMT's Dakota Makers caught up with him today in the Lost Creek community of Breathitt County. These are the scenes Senator Mitch McConnell saw on his tour of the Lost Creek community. Homes swept off their foundations by rushing floodwaters. They have immediate needs, and that's what FEMA is for, and we're listening to concerns people have about just how much red tape is involved in getting immediate assistance. McConnell says all but two of the 15 designated counties are eligible for individual assistance. He says the question now is how quickly can they get it? He also mentioned President Joe Biden's visit to Eastern Kentucky on Monday. He says the president called him while the rain was still falling. A good sign that the president came down here on Monday. He promised me they'd do everything they possibly could to expedite the cleanup and recovery, and I'm confident they will. Much like Senator Rand Paul on Tuesday, Senator McConnell says communities should be allowed to dip into their COVID-19 relief dollars for disaster cleanup. In Breathitt County, Dakota Makris, WIMT Mountain News. We asked Breathitt County Judge Executive Jeff Noble if visits from high-ranking officials are helping people affected by flooding. He says those visits do offer hope. With many homes destroyed by the flood, cleanup efforts can often fall on those who have lost everything. But that's when organizations like Team Rubicon are also there to help. Team Rubicon is a veteran-led humanitarian organization dedicated to helping folks clean up following disasters. And today, that organization was in Letcher County to help folks like Jenkins native Marilyn Durham, who says she could not have done this alone. It's just amazing to see how they came in and got all the stuff, and they're still taking stuff out and uh, still working, you know, so that's... Really, I'm thankful for all that. Team Rubicon also partnered with Tool Bank, who helped supply the organization with the tools they need to clean out these homes. Right now, U.S. officials are trying to find an Iranian man named Sharam Porsafi after discovering a plan to have John Bolton assassinated. Bolton served in senior national security positions during the Trump and Bush administrations. Tuesday, the Justice Department announced charges against Porsafi, a member of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, for allegedly trying to orchestrate a murder-for-hire plot to have Bolton killed in Maryland. If officials find Porsafi and he's convicted on all the charges against him, he could face decades in prison and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. Veterans and surviving family members of those impacted by burn pits on military bases overseas joined President Biden and celebrity activist John Stewart for a signing ceremony for a bill veterans groups called the most significant veterans health care legislation ever. CBS's Natalie Brandt has more from the White House. Veterans and their families surrounded President Biden as he signed into law a bill they spent years fighting for. When they came home, many of the fittest and best warriors that we sent to war were not the same. The PACT Act expands health care benefits for millions of veterans who returned home from war sick. We know that I have lead poisoning, that I have high levels of uranium, bismuth, and barium in my system, all of which the doctors attribute to my service in Iraq. Army veteran Eric Donahoe, who deployed to Iraq, suffered toxic exposure from burn pits on base burning trash and all kinds of other debris like batteries, Humvees, tires, medical waste, human waste is bad for us to breathe in. They should have known that um, and they did know that. This new law helps veterans link more than 20 respiratory illnesses and cancers to their toxic exposure, making it easier for them to get care and benefits. The burden of proof will be removed from veterans from proving the connection between those 23 illnesses and their deployments. Navy veteran Tom Porter of Iraq Afghanistan Veterans of America says before today, most claims had been turned down. It's monumental. This is the biggest deal, probably the biggest veterans health care legislation that's ever been passed into law. The hardest thing in this entire challenge for me has been my kids witnessing me going in and out of the hospital. While the health battles may be far from over, today provides new hope. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. 
Comedian John Stewart was a very vocal advocate helping to highlight the need for the legislation and pushing Congress to pass it. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Wednesday. The Dow closes up today more than 535 points. So a good midweek number there on Wall Street. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. But straight ahead on first at four, the beluga whale who strayed into the River Zine in France dies after a rescue attempt. Plus, continuing to watch showers and storms with heavy rain move through the mountains this afternoon. The very latest is on the way next.